It has been reported that 2.9 trillion US dollars were wiped out from stocks due to fears of a global recession. Also, US national debt hit $35 trillion. Money supply keeps rising and is now at 2.5 trillion. Derivatives exposure against assets at Goldman Sachs currently sits at 1 to 100. And Donald Trump suggests using Bitcoin to repay Treasury bond creditors. But China's economy, bad, bad, bad. Welcome to another video. My name is Fernando and today we're going to talk about the US dollar and store value and the comfort or the lack thereof that countries around the world are feeling when they trade in US dollar. It has been reported that a weaker than expected US jobs report was a catalyst for a recent decline in stock market value. Upon publishing of July figures, investors became worried about the possibility of a recession, which led to a sell-off of stocks. In a domino effect, the unexpected economic data caused a significant increase in market volatility with stock prices rapidly declining. Nvidia took a big hit during those days. A quick reminder, friends, that I post this exact same content in Spanish, so if you wish to forward this to a relative who does not understand English, make sure to use the link in the title of this video. Now, while well, market corrections are a normal part of the investment cycle, however, when there are 2.9 trillion loss, something as severe, this often indicates a significant underlying issue. It may be at this point the junction of the increase in unemployment or slow GDP growth compared to China and ASEAN, uh, soaring inflation that is affecting the country and the looming wars that add to America's political instability and affect the stock market. The issue of the United States national debt having reached $35 trillion is going to cast a long shadow over the country's economic future in the months to come. This immense financial burden carry significant implications, which include increased interest payments to divert funds from essential programs. This is going to further erode investor confidence and is going to increase inflation. With regard to inflation, the general position by most economists in Washington, from Kamala Harris to leaders uh, uh, advising her, uh, is that the US dollar dominance in global trade can offer some level of protection against inflation. It's, it's not a guarantee though. And this is in essence the topic of today's video, but first let us finish with the financial headlines. Because this is an election year in America, these indicators, the, the debt, the jobs, the stock market taking a hit, they are all exacerbating the political division and the finger pointing by the two parties while at the same time, it's a straining international relations, particularly when it comes to this repayment of the U.S. Treasury debt, given that Donald Trump, in an interview that was broadcasted last Friday, suggested that the U.S. should embrace Bitcoin as it could aid in addressing the 35 trillion U.S. dollar national debt. <laughs> Listen, well, that is a crowd pleaser, right? Since this enormous debt is placing an unfair burden on future generations that are currently choosing who to vote for, like the promise of the student loan forfeiting by Joe Biden in 2020, using Bitcoin to pay countries holding U.S. Treasury bonds, it's, it's an impossibility. Let's look at why. First, there is the fact that most of the U.S. national debt is denominated in U.S. dollars, with Treasury securities as bonds, bills, notes, all of them issued in U.S. dollars. Creditors expect payment in U.S. dollars. And creditors would need to be willing to accept Bitcoin as a legitimate form of payment. Currently, many institutional investors and governments do not see Bitcoin as a stable enough or universally accepted. Bitcoin's price is extremely volatile. The value of Bitcoin can fluctuate dramatically in a very short amount of time, making it very risky as an option for creditors who require stable and predictable payments. There's also the problem of the limited infrastructure. The Bitcoin network has limitations in terms of transaction speed and volume. Paying a massive national debt in Bitcoin would require significant advancements in the network to, to handle potentially trillions of dollars in transactions. In, in addition, there would need to be substantial infrastructure in place for converting Bitcoin to local currency, 
most creditors operating fiat currencies, that they would need that. And that's non-existent. So while it is theoretically possible, and the president likes to talk about theoretical things, for the U.S. national debt to be paid in Bitcoin, the practical realities make it highly unlikely. The U.S. government would need to establish a legal, economic, and regulatory framework that supports the use of Bitcoin for this kind of large-scale debt repayment, something that is just doesn't exist right now. The value of the U.S. dollar comes from people's trust in the U.S. government and in, in the U.S. economy and from its use in, in global trade. Some experts suggest that the U.S. dollar's dominance in global trade can offer some level of protection against inflation, arguing that, well, the higher demand of U.S. dollar in global trade allows the government to print money without limits or without consequence. But there is a disconnect between the reasons why money is printed. The straightforward fact is that increasing the amount of fiat dilutes its existing store of value, resulting in inflation. A store of value is essentially an asset, a commodity or a currency that can be saved, retrieved and exchanged in the future without losing its value. Milk, for example, is a poor store of value because it will decay and it becomes worthless. Gold and other precious metals, on the other hand, store value remarkably well. Now, when you look at a country, store value exists on those elements of a functioning economy which are necessary to create additional value. Things like infrastructure, education, research, right? In the past, America used fiat currency to pay for things that created not only store of value, but future added value. That kind of use of printed currency was an investment, uh, a bridge which is used to make commerce and travel more efficient, that is an investment. Uh, a bridge that is not used is not an investment. Bombs and bullets have a negative return. They destroy the store of value that will eventually have to be replaced. Wars are a complete negative in terms of reasons to use or print additional money. This is why some politicians are sounding the alarm and so worried now about the financialization of the U.S. economy. Over time, the emphasis has shifted towards financial activities like investment banking, trading, and financial engineering. This means that companies and investors have become more interested in making money through ever more creative financial activities and transactions rather than producing goods. Production of goods has been outsourced to China and other Asian countries. And as we saw in that table with Goldman Sachs uh, at the top, the skyrocketing of derivative markets, a highly unregulated sector, should be an alarm for anyone. Do remember that derivatives are, in essence, a gamble on a stock. It is not the stock in itself or ownership of a stock. It's simply the right to place a bet on the future behavior of that stock. Today, Goldman Sachs' assets to derivatives ratio is 1 to 100. This means that while the value of all Goldman Sachs' asset is 550 billion US dollars, the amount they have running on this type of bets is 55 trillion US dollars. There is just no way of repaying if things go flop. This potential for fortune of mayhem in derivatives is enormous, and that explains the lack of interest in production of goods on investment in infrastructure. This lack of interest in, in building infrastructure as a means of store value shows the biggest contrast between China and the U.S. economy. China and its BRI projects around the globe represent fiat currency that is being used, that is being invested in infrastructure to connect Asia, to connect and develop the Middle East, to reach Europe, Africa, to, to potentialize Latin American countries. This fiat currency investment creates the efficiencies that allow these regions to provide for their basic and societal necessities, number one. And in doing so, these fiat transactions create a store of value, the value of the infrastructure, whether it's physical 
or human, and as such, the printing of that currency is not really a driver of inflation. So contrast that to transfer payments, as in the case, for example, of these artificially created financial artifacts or trade amongst countries. These transfer payments simply redistribute the store of value when they're paid with fiat currency. It creates none. The printing of the money that is required to offset either the losses of circulating currency due to trade, as well as to offset those derivative settlements when they mature, will result invariably in inflation. There is no added store value in trade payments or derivative settlements. So there you go. This irresponsible handling of the US dollar, both domestically and globally, has the potential to push the de-dollarization into hyperdrive. Keep an eye open for markets, as Japan seems to continue to struggle and may be forced to sell more US Treasury bonds, which will add to this already very high pile of trouble for the US. All right, friends, thank you for watching. I will talk about CIPS, China Interbank Payment System, and the role that it could play in supporting an alternative system of trade in the future away from the US dollar. So if you're interested in this kind of topics, make sure to hit the subscribe button and hit the bell button as well. That will be uh, sending you an email to be notified when the video is out. So until I see you again, take it easy and bye for now.